Shalom, <coughs> Rastafari. Greetings, Salamta, Dana, Yisterling. Greetings, Melkam Fasika, as well as Akita and Baal. These are seven days, the seven days of the unleavened bread, of partaking the unleavened bread. And now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that when Christ um, teaches us these things and speaks to us these things, that then the original type there's first is the the physical first is the physical coming from our perspective coming from where we're at in order to reach and return to the father's house in our black lord and savior Yeshua HaMoshiach first things are the physical things in other words the and then we get to the metaphysical as we as we are born again as we are born from above so so the, the first ascent actually is the mental, the spiritual ascent. This is why the Bible says you must be born again from above. And, and there's an emphasis there in that particular word sound. So when we speak about repentance, the metanoia, that change, and, and in the, the Greek um, of the Septuagint, that change, that's called repentance is a change of mind. Now, we touched briefly on on um, <clears throat> the baptism, and now it's interesting that the baptism in the scripture is is trifold, is is threefold when you read the baptism in the Bible, and then the New Testament, Hwaria Paulos or the Apostle Paul, he, he makes a likeness of of how the Israelites. The Beta Israel, the Hebrews, had passed through the waters, and, and passing through the waters with Moshe, with Moses, was a type of baptism. Now, we're in the book of Leviticus in this present time. This is uh, the twelfth, the twelfth, as we're approaching the last of the the seven days of the unleavened bread, and before you, what you have pictured before you. Um, cause during these, you know, during this particular season, uh, meditation has been on I and I mind, and and we had wanted, and would have desired if 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 it were possible for us, if we had thought of it and was not so busy on other aspects of the ministry, to get the cannabis matrix. It's a new book. It's a new book that um, we are publishing, that we've compiled and and prefaced and so then seek to put it into a certain context so that the brothers and sisters can understand here's some of the um here's some of the the art and the pages from the book actually the opening pages and it's called um cannabis it's called cannabis matrix um sheshat appendix sheshat now sheshat in ancient egypt is called um the cannabis principle, the the Ghana Balsam principle, or it, it's it's defined as a goddess. Now, see the whole thing about the goddess thing. You have to remember that in the Afro-Semitic, the Hebrew, and the biblical languages, there is gender that's not in the English or the Western language. So that. Right there, you have to understand metaphor and type and, and description, and we can almost say biblical slang or what's known as biblical idiom. So here's a part of this particular book right here that, that we're publishing, selected essays of one name, Ionis the Composer, right? And it's the Cannabis Matrix. What we've been meditating on is the Passover, what we call the... Pesach or Fasika, the Passover. So what you have here is the matzah right here, and here you have the chalice, the chalice, right? The chalice or the cup. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Within Rastafari, right, within Rastafari, we call the... The, the chalice is what they know as the bong. So you know the bong is called the chalice. And there's a related article from the Internet 
we was doing a little bit of research on like TB tuberculosis because the whole thing about TB shots and testing for TB came up. So we, you know, looked this up and then we saw the connection with marijuana because we thought we heard something about a connection with marijuana. So it's kind of interesting. That's that's some additional information that we'd like to share with you, but we don't have that right now in front of us. But we're just pointing it out. Um, bong, you know, the bong and the, the chalice and the bong has become very secularized, even though the bong originally was something that was holy or sacred or set apart for the Rastafari, to the Rastafari. Now, in speaking about, in speaking about the cannabis, right, the cannabis matrix, Shasha appendix, that hopefully that book will be out within about um, another week or so, within another seven days, for the next seven days, y'all willing, um, the cannabis matrix, and this is the, the cover that it will have. This is a portion of the cover right here. Now, perhaps we can describe some of this, or some of this might be self-referential. You understand an image of of Christ as crucified, and the cross. Now, the wood. You understand not just the the Staros cross, but the wood, the inchet. So, and the it, the it, Bamarinya from the Gutas, we call the herb. The herb is called the it, 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 right? The it is is the herb or the tree. Now here you see the kadeus, you understand, know and flowering up here the seven, the seven leaves of of the tree. Now the number seven is also very very important. This whole symbology can do a whole lecture and perhaps a series of lecture lectures on this symbology. You know, we're saying on the symbology, some say it's the Kadeus, Hermes, Tat, Tahuti, you know, um, the tree of life. Uh, one can look at it as a spinal column. Some might call it the Kundalini, based on certain Eastern teaching. Now, here, remember the place that Christ was crucified? It was called Golgotha, right? Golgotha, Golgotha, or the place of the cross. I mean, the place of the skull. You understand? The, the place of the skull. So the, the place that Christ was crucified outside of the camp. And remember how closely this now connects with the, the pattern of Aaron or the pattern of Leviticus outside the camp. And remember after the golden calf um, incident, you understand that, that Moses had moved the tabernacle further away outside of the camp and we have Christ in the New Testament being crucified outside the camp in a place very interestingly enough called the place of the skull the place of the skull now we know that the lost sheep are in the valley of the dry bones prophetically from the book of Ezekiel so when we look at this popularity that's going on with the whole um, skull and crossbones imagery as well as the the use and moreover the abuse of the holy herb or marijuana or pot smoking in this time and all the issues associated with it. It, it shows us that there's more to this even scripturally and biblically. Something so important could not be avoided in the document of truth if the scriptures, the Bible, the Metzhaf Kedus contains the truth. And if it is the truth, according to your amen, according to your admittance, your witness, your faithful and true witness, right? I'm speaking to those who, who are maybe more Bible-based. Other folks might not be so Bible-based before such lectures as this, but hopefully if they get the, the point and start to look at the Scripture with fresh eyes, approach it with a repentant mind, in other words, with a change of metanoia, they can clearly see that the true interpretation or the true word in the scripture confirms these facts, both what we're witnessing in society, in our present time, in our present reality, that when the Bible is correctly and properly interpreted, it speaks to the truth of this time as well as providing the solution. 
You understand? But Christ already has said, ye shall what? Know the truth. And what? The truth shall set you free. So in um, this particular Fasica Passover, Pesach 2012, this particular season that we're in right now, and I think it's, I think it's very significant. There's, first of all, if you are spiritually conscious, you can feel it. As it says, there's a mystic you know what I mean? There's a mystic in, in the ear. You know, there's something very spiritual in the ear for those who can perceive that this time is not like any ordinary time. In addition to what we hear about 2012 and, and, and the Mayan calendar and, and, the, and the end of a cycle and, you know, all the other things associated in heaven, all the signs in heaven, Nibiru, you know, and the comet, Elanine. Um, Jerusalem star, all, all of these signs, asteroids, solar flares, alignment, syzygies, so forth and so on, in heaven as well as what's going on on the face of the earth. But Christos, Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, our big black brother, our big brother, Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus Christos, he already has said that Yeshua, what? Gnosis, ye shall have gnosis, become gnosticoi, ye shall know the truth. So, part of the, the, the criminalization of the marijuana, you understand, and part of the demonization of the marijuana is based on, and a major part when we say this, is based on the ignorance you understand the ignorance of the truth. You understand the when we look in other cultures, and this is also part of a, a new series of, um, of 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 books that we're seeking to publish as a part of the Rastafari Rastafari Book Club. And check us out on the internet www.lojsociety.org. Click on the books um, the books link to see some of the books that we publish that we have available as well as some of the books that have been written or composed, compiled by I and I of the society, the line of Jewish society, Yehuda, Moa, Andesa, Machiba, and by Ine Rasia Dinos Teferine. So the latest book or the new book that we have coming forward, um, is called, uh, Cannabis Matrix, the Sheshat appendix and it contains it contains a trilogy of um anonymous um anonymous epistles one who calls himself Ionis the composer we came across it on the internet and and um you know in studying over the years as well as other information in this research we find it very very it, it, it's 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 a one person's testimony but this testimony it, it it explains and it articulates that which many of us as Rastafari in spirit and in truth know is true. But what has been 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 lost or not fully recovered is the true theology. You know, when we speak about the the, the the theology of Rastafari, the true school of thought, the true root of true Christianity, Judeo Christianity, because cannabosum or the cannabis, otherwise known as the herb or the tree of Mary and John or marijuana, is in the Bible. It's it's in the Bible. You understand? And it was used in the ancient world and it was known even from a Judeo uh Christian perspective to be holy. To be holy. Now this is interesting because when you look at the use or the abuse of the cannabosum and the persecution and the ignorance surrounding it, you hopefully will recognize with I and I how important it is for us to, to seek to know well what is you know you know you know what's really behind this this whole thing. Well, this right here that you see in front of you is is, is a contrast between the 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 sacrament, the the bread and the wine. You understand? Also known as the bread and the wine, the the fire, fire and the blood. You remember the baptism says that in, in water was the first, the water, 
Now, notice that the bong is used, uses water as well. Now, the thing with the bong that is in, interesting, and this is another article that we want to bring forward to you, the thing with the bong that's um, um, really interesting is that um, they were talking about TB, tuberculosis, perhaps being transferred by um, the bong because a, a cluster, a cluster in this particular study of, of tuberculosis, I don't know if it was in Australia or, or perhaps another country, but it was a group of white boys, basically, a group of, a group of uh, Caucasians or so-called Europeans or Anglo-Americans, but white, right? Um, white males, it appears. And somehow they had tuberculosis, and they said it was an unlikely ethnic group, so forth and so on. We have the article out there. I think it's on um, um, a page called My Yet, but we'll we'll bring up that information. You can look up um, TB conspiracy and and marijuana, and it'd probably be one of the first articles that actually come up. We just looked up TB conspiracy, and it had came up the connection with marijuana. Now, what was interesting about this particular article? Was that they were saying that the 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 marijuana was used up to the 1930s before it got criminalized. Now notice marijuana getting criminalized in the 19 in the 1930s. How very you know like they say how ironic, you know how ironic would that be? Because the 1930s, no doubt you recall, was the very same. Um, time period, right, the very same time period as a great phenomena, a great prophetic sign was fulfilled in the earth, and that was the crowning of Christ in his kingly character, or Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Moa Anbesa, as the Emenegeta Yehuda, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, elect of God, Siyuma Egeziariher, king of kings of Ethiopia, Nagusa Negest, Ze Ethiopia, was crowned November 2nd, 1930. Now, when you look at the what's behind the whole marijuana conspiracy, it goes back to the 1930s. You know, saying it connects with 1930s. Now, also in the 1930s, there is a a a black messiah, a black messiah consciousness amongst the the lost sheep, the Beta Israel, the black peoples, the Ethiopian Hebrews in the in the Americas and and throughout the the Caribbean, but especially in 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 North America, we see this consciousness come up, and in particular, in the Isle of Jamaica, you understand, in the Isle of Jamaica, and we can take you to some prophecy in the scripture, which is very interesting, if you read the prophecy without a bias, but just read it based on what you know and the information, the history, the accurate testimony of what has happened, you can see how it fits directly, you understand, how it fits directly and connects directly with this prophetic event that took place in the biblical land of Cush, also known as Ethiopia. And remember Psalm 68, verse 31, princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. Now, that's a very, very prophetic scripture. You know what I'm saying? And, and also when we connect that other scripture concerning Ethiopia, we have Amos 9 and 7. Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? And also in Isaiah, you know, it speaks about the very far, the king being crowned in the very far country, and, and the isles, the islands shall wait for his law, and this idea and this movement and this seed that we know as Rastafari being identified, even coming out of the Caribbean and out of Jamaica, even though we find on record in Louisiana, New Orleans, we have on record the first church of Rastafari back in the 1920s and 30s. This is very interesting. The first church of Rastafari, at least in the 1920s, if not actually before. 
because then the co connection with um, Rabbi Wentworth, Arthur Matthews of the Black Hebrews, the Commandment Keepers congregation is also there, his testimony, his, the, the record. So this is nothing new in a sense, but this is a growth of 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 of, 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 of the, the manifestation of prophecies it's like a seed begins to grow and get and and, and get nourished and waters and now be as fruit now we in this present time have to understand the half of the story that hasn't been told now the connection with the criminalization and the illegalization of a naturally growing herb you understand, of marijuana. If you study the whole marijuana conspiracy and um, going back in like the, to, to the root of this, this, um, this, this, this uh, mischief that was framed against marijuana using law or using man-made law, you will see the connection was also in particular to black people. You understand, there was a particular fear about black people smoking marijuana. Mm-hmm. Now, we we need to first of all understand that in the context of its time. All right, and in, in, in the context of the nineteen twenties and thirties with this rise of consciousness in the black Messiah or in the black Christ or Christ in his kingly character and black people's um um connection. You understand, as lost sheep of the house of Israel, as children of, of Judah and of Jerusalem, to the blameless Ethiopians and to our covenanted king of kings, to Kedemawi Haile Selassie, which now r restores a bridge to the, to the two families, you understand, to the Ethiopian Hebrews at home and to the Ethiopian Hebrews abroad. You understand? So we have his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, formerly known as Rastafari, being that, that, that point man, that son of man of this particular prophecy. Now connected with it, of course, we know is the herb or what's known as the cannabis. You understand what's known as the cannabis. Now, the particular article that we had um, reference to, concerning um, the, the TB, tuberculosis, conspiracy, marijuana, was interesting, and we'll, we'll highlight that um, coming forward and bring you the article. Actually, we're going to mention a little bit more about it, especially about the fact that marijuana was used at one time to treat the tuberculosis and various other diseases. You understand? Some of our original... Um, um, uh, tracks and other information that we had published going back to the 1991 when the society was was first formed, the Society of His Imperial Majesty or the Lion of Judah Society, this Society of His Majesty, this brotherhood was formed, were speaking to those issues because we were shocked when we actually found out when all these things had happened, these, these new laws came on the books, Back in the 19, you could say, uh, 30s, you understand, what led up to it, how there was a particular racial motivation, you understand, in particular, vis-a-vis -vis these laws, particularly against marijuana, particularly against marijuana. Now, marijuana has a connection biblically and scripturally to what Christ says right here in Matthew, here we go, Matthew chapter chapter 26 verse 29 Matthew chapter 26 verse 29 where this is now on the this is this is the Lord's Supper this is the evening of the Lord's Supper this is this is Christ speaking on the evening of the Lord's Supper from the first of the four gospels from Matthew um Caduce Mateos chapter 26 verse 29 and verse 29 says but I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
Now, now this is very interesting. I want you to pay attention to this, brothers and sisters, because we want to explore um, um, the, the kind of balsam in the sense of the lamb's bread as Christ, you know what I'm saying, as Christ or as a sacrament, as this very new sacrament. You know what I'm saying? Now, the word drink is also very curious, too, because when we look into the Afro-Shemitic, the, uh, the older usage, you know, like even today we use words, people use words, but they use words in particular senses, and sometimes there is new senses or connotations or, or idioms of speech. So, so you might use one expression for something else. Now, the word drink is interesting. And we can document this for you from 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 first source information. The word drink also is idiomatic, is is a Afro Shemitic idiom for smoking, to smoke in the sense of to drink. And now the whole idea of the chalice is very interesting. When we speak about the chalice in the sense of the bong, right? That that utilizes the water, that utilizes the fire that utilizes the herb, you know, then that is shared in a sacramental or a communion. It's the common union or the communion cup. Now, I don't want you to lose sight of what it says in um, Corinthians chapter 11 concerning, concerning the Lord's table and concerning the Lord's Adonis supper. Because there's a warning that's given. So over these particular days of this particular um, Passover, Fasica 2012, you know, we've been meditating certain points about Fasica and about the Exodus and, you know, just allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us. But in that, that, that tried, you, you, that spiritual you, head resting with, with Jai and in the Holy Spirit, we began to see some elements that, you know, you see some things there in, in, in the spirit, in the mind that you become a little bit curious about. You understand? Some things kind of stand out. You understand? And, and you know, there must be some explanation. You have your own so-called, your own gut your, or your own inner, you understand, your own inner, inner sense about it. But you want to get the, you want to study it. You know what I'm saying? So you can know it, not just to guess on it because you have a feeling, but you want to justify, you understand, know and make right that feeling and have documentation like even Christ would say. You understand? Know Yeshua shows us the example. Is it not written? You understand? Know saying? When he was, was, was disputing with the various different ones who were keeping the outer level of the religion but had no knowledge of the inner... Of, of the inner sense and the inner aspects of it. The same thing is going on today with Christianity, you understand, even with Judaism today concerning this particular sacrament, concerning this particular rite and ritual that causes so much, so much controversy among those who have nothing to do with it. You understand, and those who have nothing to do with it, and those who say that, well, they wouldn't even deal with it like with the Rastafari. But yet, when Rastafari speaks, when I and I speak of our sacramental rites, and see, this is what's all at the, at, at, at the heart of the matter. You understand, this is not an issue we can even walk away from, the criminalization of the Rastafari brethren and even sisterin, you understand, and, and ones and ones being incarcerated. You understand, and lives being destroyed, not for any violent, you understand, or immoral crime, but for the 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 use or the possession of holy sacrament. They call it a contraband, but for I and I as a Rastafari, it is a sacrament. But if we say it's a sacrament, right, brothers and sisters, we need to be able to prove that it truly is a sacrament, not just to them, but to I and I selves. And this is what has been so sorely lacking, you understand, among the Rastafari, you understand, among I and I. Even though we might point out certain verses where it says herb for the service of man, but, you know, that that's that's good, but that's interpretive, you understand. So, you know, a, a good um, counter-argument could interpret that in a couple of different ways that necessarily does not imply 
you know what I'm saying, that, that may not be, be um, implicative, you understand, or implicating of what we are speaking about. So we have to study and show ourselves approved. We definitely have to study, my brothers and sisters, to show ourselves approved. So this is a, this is a little bit of an introduction, you understand, into the, into the cannabis, the cannabis as sacrament. You understand, the cannabis is a sacrament. And beginning with this particular verse right here, and this particular, um, um, the night of the, the, the Passover, or the night of the Lord's Supper, you know, you know in Matthew, he says something, and, and this is repeated in Mark. It's not found in Luke's or, or John's gospel, but it's found in two. So what does the Bible say? Two or three witnesses, right? in the mouth of two or three witnesses, right? Every word is, is, is ratified. Every word is justified in the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses. So we have two witnesses right here. We have Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, and Mark chapter 14, verse 25, which speaks, which Christ, the Moshiach, at the at the table, Yehovah said, presiding, blessing the, the, the bread and the wine, he says of the wine, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Mm. This is very important theologically concerning kana balsam, the kana balsam, or the cannabis. You see, in the English, you say cannabis, but comes from the Hebrew kana balsam. So in, in, the, in the new um, scroll, you understand, know the new scroll that this is it right here that we are publishing, and hopefully it will be out in the next seven days, right, and it's a it's a compilation, but we need to document these things and to put them, you know, as they relate one to another. In its in its proper, you understand, in its in its proper categories, so that future generations, ourselves, and future generations can be able to um, research and document this evidence. You understand what we have discovered, what we have concluded what we can prove or the evidence that we have so far. So we go to um, Exodus chapter 30. You understand, in Exodus chapter 30, if you can see right down here, let's see if we can um, make this any larger right here. Now, this is from the Hebrew. This is from the Hebrew Torah right here. And this is a, this is, this is a, a enlargement from, from the book right here. Um, cannabis matrix. We've touched on some of this information already in some of the vids. And so what we're doing right here is further documenting this within documentation, within books. You understand, within books, making a memorial of this so others, you understand, the children, the children's children can build on this knowledge and on this truth. So we have right here in um, uh, Exodus, Right, Exodus, if you look right over here, it says other sources apparently indicate that it was the Indian plant. Now, this fragrant cane is called the fragrant cane or the sweet cane, the, the kene or the kana, like the marriage at, 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 at Cana in the Bible, Cana, that's kana or kene, kana bosom or besom in Hebrew. Ancient sources identify this with the sweet calamus, Septuagint, the Rambam on on Kerithot, one one uh, Sadia Ibn uh, Janak or Yanak. This is the sweet flag or flag root flag. You can look that up. Also, make a note of flag because it speaks also of a type of a reed. But if you look at the word in English, it's flag. And some say that this is an unknown, a unknown herb. You have to remember that even in ancient times, the the herb, you understand what we know as the the kana balsam or the cannabis, had various different names, just like it has today. 
you understand, various different names for almost the same type of different reasons, except with the exception that no one had dared to so-called criminalize, you understand, God's own creation. You understand, to criminalize and demonize the cannabis or the or or this right here, the hemp. So as this explained, which is a footnote, you understand, from the Torah, it's a footnote. Let's show you this right here so you can see. Here it goes in the Torah, right, in Exodus chapter 30. You will see where it says, U kine balsam, according to the pointing right here, U kine balsam, right, U kine balsam. Now, if you look down here, right, if you look down here, it goes on to explain the sweet flag or flag root, the acorus calamus, which grows in Europe. Now, see, here's where, some of the, here's where a lot of the confusion comes in. When you look at the Bible, if you're looking at the Bible from its true root, its true Hebrew and ancient root, you have to look to the Afro-Shemitic root, in other words, the Ethiopic root, the inner African root. You have to look at it through the spectacles of the original peoples to put it into its own context. In the same way that a lot of things in the Bible are not understood by um, Western so-called white Europeans and those who have been indoctrinated in the Western Anglo-European school of theology or seminary thought, why they miss a lot of these things. You understand? One, one of the main reasons why they miss a lot of these things because they're looking at it in the wrong context. It's almost like when we look at slang, certain slang that comes from deep, deep, deep in the ghetto, right, comes from, from deep within black so-called people's experience. We know historically a lot of these things were not understood, and only recently Europeans and white folks, you understand, have been able to really comprehend, you understand, as well as co-opt, a lot of these things that one time were uniquely black. Now, we've all, you know, black folks, we know it. Some white folks will be honest and admit to it as well. Some things that black folks did or ways that they, you know, um, words they use or phrases. We see it a lot of, you know, we see it today. It is what it is. We, you know, we hear these in, in the same attitude, the same spirit, that if you're not looking like at the TV or something like that, and you hear somebody say, or you're in the crowd, and you hear somebody say, so you got to look at it because you, you, it sounds black, but somehow you know the person is not so-called one of us, but they have co-opted this phraseology. You understand? So in the same way that it goes on today, Many things are not understood when it comes out the ghetto. Uh, black people understand it. They understand the slang. You understand the so-called Ebonics. You, you always, they understand it. But white folks don't. As soon as white people do understand it, the first thing they do is they, they, they market it. They turn it into a product, if you notice. A lot of, a lot of uh, music and, and other things are being used to sell things to everyone in the world, and part of that is because what hip-hop in a sense, has, has, has shown them, you know what I mean, how black culture or black, black, um, black people powering or behind this, you know, black people are good marketers, you understand, whether for good or in the present dispensation for evil, you understand, are good marketers of, you know, of, 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 of ideas. So now, how can we overstand this today? How can we comprehend this today and we can't comprehend it in biblical times? You see, once we can now see what's going on today, what's before our eyes, and then put it into its context in biblical times, we can overstand why there's been so many misinterpretations, you understand, of, of, of key elements that were originally African or Ethiopian or Afro-Shemitic, but now when these ideas like, like Judaism and even Christianity move to Europe or are adapted by Europeans, we see this in hip-hop too. When, when white kids adapt, you understand, hip-hop culture as it's called, you understand, or hip-hopism, you know, you can see where it's similar, but also where it starts to 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 be reconfigured. You understand within their image. You know, and then it even goes so far, like like rock and roll, until there's a there's a debate about who really created rock and roll. 
while at the time they all knew that it was black people who were inspiring them, in a sense, on one level, freeing them, you understand, from their own medieval, modern medievalism. But anyway, it goes on to say it appears that a similar species grew in the Holy Land, in the Hula region in ancient times, and here they quote Theophrastus, um, History of Plants 9 and 7. Other sources apparently indicate that it was the Indian plant. Now, see, another thing about when you see India or Indian use, and we're talking about ancient times, India and Ethiopia, you understand, you understand, was one civilization, see, and and the and the Indian or the Hindus Kush, that's what they call it, Hindus Kush. You them because the Kushites or the Ethiopians established that ancient civilization that's referred to as India. So this Indian plant was called the uh, um, Simpo Pogan Martini, which has the form of red straw, yad. Um, clay ha mikdash here one and three, on the basis of cognate pronunciation and Septuagint readings, some identify uh, kinne the the kinne balsam with the English and Greek cannabis or the hemp plant. So it's very clear that that the ancients understood cannabis. They understood the hemp plant, so forth. And so on. Here's an article here that we'll just show you. Um, this is called um, um, Marijuana, uh, Mara, Marijuana, the Burning Bush of Moses, Mysticism and Cannabis uh, Experience. Now, that's interesting right there, but um, let's go through this. Is marijuana a religion? Some of the modern, um, more liberal um Anglo-Americans and Europeans who are more in favor of perhaps a more recreational, medicinal, or even um, religious use of it have brought up this debate, you know, saying front and center. And we, you know, we give thanks at least for them, you know, doing what they have done. We as Rastafari should have been more front and center on this issue instead of getting into just, the just uh, like um, legalize it for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Just legalize it. That's not the point. It's legal already. We have a responsibility if we truly are that that um, priesthood after the order of Melchizedek or Melchizedek. But is marijuana a religion? You understand? Is marijuana a religion? Um, so this is some of the debate that's currently, you know, out there concerning um you know, marijuana, you understand marijuana right here, uh, but, and this article is interesting, cannabis used in ancient and modern um, religions, how cannabis is used in, in many other religions too. You understand many other so-called religions use cannabis. In fact, the founding father, uh, what's his name, Washington, you know, Washington, he actually, he chopped down the cannabis tree. Actually, it wasn't the cherry tree, but it was the cannabis tree. When you get to the root of that modern myth, mythology right here. So this is an interesting article as well that basically um, echoes some of the same basic um, points, beginning with Genesis 1 and 12, Genesis 1, 29 to 31. Um, as well as Exodus 30, verses 22 to 29, where it lists um, cannabis in an oil for anointing the priests, uh, uh, anointing oil for the priests of Israel. But that was mistranslated. That's what we just was touching on the footnote um, previously, because that's exactly the part that was mistranslated in the Greek and Latin and English Bibles as, the, as calamus. And they put the sweet calamus because of that aromatic fragrance that the canna balsam or the canna balsam has. Now, here it goes on to say how many religions use cannabis as a sacrament. You understand going on using cannabis as a sacrament and giving many different um, 
verses and and other aspects of it. So a lot of this we're seeking to, you know, we're seeking to print and to publish again to get out there because the criminalization has not um, desisted, but actually has been escalating. You understand? Um, for such quality of life, we call it a quality of life crime in a sense. One is seeking to practice their human right and their God-given way of life according to Human Rights Declaration Article, I think it's Article 18, um, roughly Article 18, which basically says that we as Rastafari have a right to the sacramental religious expression, you know, saying, amongst ourselves in congregation. Uh, with and 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 and, and utilizing the the, the cannabosum or the cannabis as 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 a sacrament. So that that is one level of the argument. That's one level right there that we 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 need to step up on. And I really want to coordinate with some of the brothers and sisters out there. A few of them we've spoken to um, already. Whether had phone contact. Some of them we've actually over the years have gotten to meet. Um, but some of the brothers, some of you brothers and sisters out there especially as Rastafari who are approaching this from a Rastafari um, perspective, the cannabosum and the cannabis, you know what I'm saying, and the sacrament. Let us, let us reason together. Let us work together and, and, and produce some sort, of, some sort of work that can help to build on this, this time, this moment, this opportunity that we have um, right now. Now, here it says, whereas the federal government does not recognize medical marijuana, Religious use remains a viable argument in federal court. You know what I'm saying? In federal courts. Now, um, there's a lot of quotes that actually are used in this particular article here. A few interesting um, quotes. Now, here they have article to cult members. The weed is, is sacred. Um, Naya, who calls himself man of holy ganja fire, shows off his digs. So here we have a brethren right here. Um, with his, uh, you know, with his, uh, this looks like a, uh, perhaps a chalice right here, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's Naya right there, Brother Renaya. And um, then the, the, this speaks about suppression of the goddess and cannabis. Some say it was started by the Jews, you understand? Um, controlling the masses, um, coffee, cigarettes, and gnosis. Very interesting because you see that the argument now is going around about smoking. You know what I'm saying? About smoking being harmful instead of the pollution of the environment by the Levi Leviathan Corporation. So they flipped the blame. They're actually blaming the people. You understand? Know Why not taking any real blame to the corporations for polluting the environment with their, with their technology? So they flipped that whole script right there. Yovas, but this is also another attempt to monopolize, you know, the tree of life, the cannabosa. So coffee, we also know coffee in the connection of kepha with Ethiopia as well, and gnosis, knowledge, knowledge with Christ. So is the use of marijuana a religion or not? Some say that the answer is not a simple yes or no. Um because of the patri patriarchal genocide, uh, gentrification of everything of Mother Nature. So there's a particular approach to it that, um, that is interesting, but it's not, it's not full. You know what I'm saying? There's a particular approach to it. When we're speaking about the, the evil patriarchy is, is the, is the so-called great white father. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's the white man mm -hmm, being Santa Claus for the world. You know what I'm saying? Trying to pretend that he is the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then blaspheming the name and the image and the doctrine and, 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 and the, the gospel of Christ for his um, megalomaniac, you know what I'm saying, and, and satanic powered, you know what I'm saying, evil doings on the face of the earth. So even, you know, even they are called to repent as well. First for the Jews, for the Judahites, for the blacks, and then for the Gentiles. Now, um, as we go forward with some of these other pages, here is um, uh, one of the kind of orthodox paintings of, um, of Moses, and it's kind of interesting right here because you see this looks like a bud. On one level, it looks like a bud, but this is like a burning bush, burning bush right there. 
one of the orthodox um, icons, uh, you know. Um, did Moses inhale? This is part of the article as 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 well, which is which is an interesting article. Let's see if there's any more um, information that we can merely share. This is this is a very interesting article right here. So what we're seeking to do is is to download this information, is to is to print it out, to disseminate it. You also know, we 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 need, you know, we need this information. We need to have this documentation. We need to have our paperwork and our knowledge in order in order to represent this name, this new name, Rastafari. You understand? And to, to help to free up and to free up our brothers and sisters and others you understand, who are being criminalized, who have been incarcerated, you understand, for no, for no um, crime, no crime. I mean, for, not for murder, not for stealing, not for violence, you understand, N not for any of, anything that is truly, that we even by our, by John's law would agree is a crime, but for the practice of their faith-based way of life. So we want to get to the root of this, and one of the ways we've begun is is by publishing. You know what I'm saying? By publishing and disseminating, you know, saying even some compilations of information. You know, saying at first, you know, even before getting into our own research and ideas and going into the depths of it, because much of this is still, you know, a a work in progress. You know, this is still a work in progress, but we definitely see the connection. You understand? Between the, remember, the bread and the wine. This is symbolic of the bread and the wine. You understand? The Last Supper, bread and the wine. The chalice, the cup right here, also known as the grail. And, and this is the mantra, or this is the bread right here, which is symbolic of the body of Christ. And when you see mantra, you know, that's, that's baked in the oven, you can definitely see um, the humanity of Christ. In other words, his blackness. Even in the color you, you, of 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 the bread, you understand as as a type within a type within a type, right? So when you look at the bread and the wine, what we call the cigar with them, you understand the cigar, the the flesh and the dem, the blood of Christos, symbolically, metaphysically, you understand in the overstanding, it is the flesh, the body, and the blood of Christ. But now the symbols is the wine, right? The wine, the red wine, and the the unleavened, the unleavened bread. Notice something about the unleavened bread is also key too, because it once again points to his Ethiopian humanity. You know, his Ethiopian humanity. Mm -hmm. Why do we say this? Because leaven, leaven is 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 a, a a symbolic it's a code word in the teachings of the Mashi it's a code word for for hat yat it's a code word for 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 sin you understand a cold word cold word for sin now if we notice something right here let us bring this down a little bit if we notice something right here look what we see we see the similarity within the the bread, you understand, for the for the Christ type. You understand? Because it it describes Christ his person. You understand? His person. Remember, he is the second Adam. That means it must return to the very root, repairing the systemic anomaly. You understand, repairing that systemic anomaly. So when we speak as 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 black people you understand, as, as, as ethnic Hebrews, and we take some, some rightful pride after all the humiliation, you understand, and lies that we were exposed when we get to find out, well, Christ is black and the people of the Bible are black, and this is about black folks, you understand, but there's a responsibility in it too. Because then, in accepting that, we also must recognize that, yes, the Gentiles have their judgment where, where they went beyond what Yahweh had willed. But we first of all have to come to grips with the fact that 
that this 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 sin, this khatiyat, th this error in in Jah's original matrix, came in through the fall of the original black man. So so so, so we have to understand that the white man of so called European, as we might call him, or the Tamahu, you understand, know is a byproduct from that. And that's the sign that was shown to, to, to Moshe, to Musa. Remember the hand, the hand sign where he put his hand in his bosom? And he took it out, and it was leprous as snow. It was white as snow. And then he put his hand in his bosom again. And, and, and then when he pulled it out, it returned to his other flesh. And Yahweh says, and Jah says to Moshe, to Moses, that was to be a sign. Right, that 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 right there was a sign for Moses. A sign of what? So today we have the white Jews, which appear for to most people from this modern perspective to have come out first, like Moses' hand coming out of his bosom first. But now, as he puts it in again, you see the whole second coming of Yeshua. You understand what's called the second coming of, of Christ, but what we know now in the epigenosis or in the full knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim of the Son of God, you understand, is the appearance of the King of Kings, is the unveiling of the King of Kings or Christ in his kingly character identified with Moa Anbesa, the Imma Negeda Yehuda, identified with the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So if we look at prophetic signs in the world and we study Revelation, we study the sacred scriptures, the presence, the, the, the visible presence of the king, who is God, according to the prophets and the Biyat and the Vim, yeah, and even in the New Testament, is amongst them. In other words, Christ in the truth must be revealed and have been revealed in the 20th century. Because remember, we're in the 21st century now, accordingly, in the, in the Ethiopian millennium, the new millennium, or the, the eighth millennium, the, the Sementenya Shi Ahmet. We're in this new millennium since 2007. Let's recognize. So we see a seven-year difference. We can touch on the seven. Now we have these seven days that come after Pesach, right? After Pesach or Fasica come the seven days of unleavened bread. This is why we say that this year, this 2012, and the signs we're, we're seeing, in fact, after we had finished up the other video posted up there, there was another tsunami, earthquake or tsunami warning right in that same region of the world. But, but, but thankfully this time, you understand, there was, there was little to no um, human loss of life because Yah, Jah, is a lover of of humanity, and he wants, he desires that all come to repentance, that all, you understand, that all come, now will all of them take the advantage, well, do, do criminals always take a plea bargain, do they take a plea bargain, sometimes they do, ones who say if they're smart, if they know what's good for them, but sometimes, you understand, there's other times that they don't, because they think they can get over, and such is, such is what we have in this, in this present time. So in looking at the Kanabosan, you understand the Kanabosan as the lamb's bread. You understand? And and, and, and and the cannabis Christ. What do we mean by the cannabis Christ? This is why we say the article and the um the book, the new book that we are coming out with Cannabis Matrix. It's 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 the Sheshat appendix. In fact we can call it volume one or or book one. You understand? It's it's the work of another, but not another. You understand? One who is expressing Ionis, the composer, expressing expressing a very a very enlightened view as his namesake, as 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 John Ja 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 um, Anna or Ja Hana Johan. Johan, the grace of Jah or Jah is gracious. You know, since we give thanks for for this brother and this brother's work, you understand, and we take a Christian anointed liberty to publish and to share this with you because, in truth, it really opens, you know, and helps to not just open the eye, 
You know what I'm saying? But with the eye, because your, your eye, in a sense, has to be open. You have to be receptive to the truth. You have to love the truth. Some don't love the truth, so they forever learning but never able to come to the act, acknowledgement, to act on the knowledge of the truth. So what they need to pray for is pray that, that our Holy Father, in the name of Jesus Christos, restores to them and gives to them a love of the knowledge of the truth. But uh, may, uh, may I and I just, just warn you, and this is a good warning, this is a, pie, a, a preparatory warning, that if you pray for the love of the knowledge of truth, you, you, are, you will learn the truth. You understand? Yet it might not be, you understand, what your, yourself likes. This is why Christ says to deny yourself. You understand? To deny yourself, to do what? To pick up your cross and to follow him, but not to follow Yeshua, right? In order to follow Yeshua, one has to know Yeshua. This is why the gospel is so emphatic. You know what I'm saying? It's so very emphatic when it comes to who may partake. Who may partake of 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 the of the holy things. You see, if we say that um marijuana, Mary the testimony, the the signification of of Mary and John, who were witnesses, you understand, to Christ on the wood, on the cross. Right? So it's it's interesting we call it marijuana, Mary and John. They were the witnesses to this. So we have one name, marijuana, the next name, cannabosum, which is Old Testament. So cannabis, or cannabis is this, it's Old Testament, it's tabernacle use in and connected with the what? The anointing oil. You understand? And some even see that there might be a connection with, with the iton or the ancients as well. But we see clearly the anointing, that it's one of the ingredients of the anointing oil. How interesting. You understand? So cannabis, the herb, can be used in many, many different forms. You know what I'm saying? They say they are 12 manner. They are 12 manner of, um, of fruit. And I think this also we, we try to highlight in here. Let's see if we have brought this. This has some of the major verses, you understand, as well as some other reference, some other reference uh, information. Let's Let's bring it to the twelve manner of fruit. Like we said, this is the new work. This is the new work coming out. Right? This is the new work coming out. Let's see if we can get it to the All right. Oh there we go, right there. Here we go. It was a couple of pages more. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see this more full. All right. Now, maybe a little, we don't know how clear it's going to be from where you're viewing it, but let's touch on some of the products. Twelve manner of fruit. I mean, we speak about holistic. When people talk about saving the so-called ecology, you know what I'm saying? If they really want to save the earth or save the ecology, they need to learn what Jah will is. You understand what his will in heaven is and to seek to make their wills obedient to his good influences and to establish his will, the kingdom on earth. You know what I'm saying? That would be the best thing one can do to not just save the earth, but also to be saved and to save themselves. So some of the manners of 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 of, of fruit. We have paper products come from the 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 cannabosum, you understand, or the hemp, or the herb, the marijuana, the tree. You understand? We have textiles. We have molded plastics, the holistic molded plastics that can come from the anabolism. We have body care products, right? Body care products, which is, which is holistic health care products, construction. You understand? Livestock feed. You understand? Um, livestock uh, uh, bedding. Livestock bedding. Nutritional supplements. From the anabolism, essential oils, medicines, right? Medicines and food. Now, do, do we count it? One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Eleven, right? Did we count it as one? Well, 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 well the, 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 the twelfth is, of course, as a sacrament. You understand? As a sacrament. It's holiest application, which is as a sacrament. So, this is what has been given to us as Rastafari, as Rastafari. When, when we, if we really look at Rastafari clearly, and take it in order, because our father, Abba Kedus, is not the author of, of chaos. He's not the author of chaos. That's not the program that he has written for us. You know what I'm saying? He has not written chaos, but through his word, through the good news, through his glory, he has given to us order. So we look at the order of Rastafari, the, the anabosum or the hemp, the herb, is very important, and we have not defended the truth of Jah, first of all, concerning the Anabosim. And therefore, we have not benefited ourselves, but others continually, without faith, or without, without the faith that we claim, you know saying, they profit, they can use the, the Anabosim, they've got in the medicinal marijuana thing, so forth and so on, and we think, well, if they get that, well, we're going to get something out of it. And we just see the incarceration of our brothers and sisters you understand, for even as having a, a little bit of sacramental herb on them. You understand, continually increasing. And know how we know this? Because we minister. This society of His Majesty actually seeks to do what it can according to fulfilling His word and seek to minister to our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated and to their families. You understand, and this is what we ask for you all to fellowship, to, to learn, to study, to grow. You understand, to grow in the knowledge. Because when you come into the knowledge of the truth and, and you understand now what, the, what is the, the, the will of our Father, what is the will of the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, you understand, then us working together, you understand, and doing his will, you understand, with the particular gifts, that he has given all of us, you know, the, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance, but repent because the kingdom of heaven is on now. The kingdom of heaven is on now. Um, my brothers and sisters, so this right here, you understand, looking at this, and this is what we've been on a meditation, because if you notice in, in, the, in, in, the, in the Lord's Supper, Gitarat, you notice that there is no... There is no lamb, but the lamb is Christ. You see, so when we talk about Christ as Kana Bosom or, 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 or the true Christ, in this time of Rastafari revelation, the true Christ is revealed in that newness of the fruit of the vine that Christ speaks about right here. But I say to you, I would not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day. So there's a particular day. You understand? That day. You remember how Christ left off in the reading at, at, at the synagogue? Uh, I think it was Nazarite. You understand? He didn't go into the day of vengeance. He, he didn't mention that, but he closed the scroll right there. Is this connected with this particular day until what? That day when I drink it new with you. In my Father's kingdom, right? In my Father's kingdom. Now we see clearly, you understand, that Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the kingdom for which he is king of kings, and Christ in him and in I and I is that Lord of lords. See, here's where you have to eat. You understand what he says, my bread, eat this. You understand? The wine, drink this. That was a preparation. Notice how the bread and the wine was a preparation. He, he, he always, until that day, until that day would come. Now, we, we can ask the question, was that day then? In other words, the, the day that he's speaking about in Matthew 26 and 29 right here, did that day already come? At the time that this was spoken, of course not. No, he was speaking of something that was to come to pass. 
as we study the scriptures, especially the gospel, the Wengel, the four gospels, Mateus, Marcos, Luke, Os, um, Johannes, you know, and, and, and John, as we study these, these four gospels, which uh, the king of kings, Kedemari, Hala Selassie, says they, they are what pillars for all humanity. You understand? Know, for all humanity. It was given first, you understand, know, to the Judahite, to Yehuda. We could say, uh, in, in the metaphor of the Jew and the Gentile, it was given first to the Afro Shemitic, you understand, know, to the Ethiopian Hebrew, to the Beta Israel, in other words. And then it was given to the Goyim, or the Goys, you understand, know, to the Gentiles, to others. You know, was, but originally it was given to the Beta Israel. Now there was always that remnant. Now we must recall that even with 70 AD, there was that remnant. And where was that remnant of the Beta Israel fulfilling his word that there will always be a, 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 a man to sit on the throne of great King David? This is that man. You understand? Know and the events that would follow. The coronation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the coronation of Jairastafari, as we say eschatologically, would further verify and prove the Rastafari revelation of the return of the black Messiah or Christ in his kingly character. So this is the Wengel, this is the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. Stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. Shalom, Rastafari.